Welcome back to Star Trek Online, everybody. I am your host, the House Code Gamer, and today we are taking a look at the Atlas Class Prototype Dreadnought. A ship that otherwise fits the design language of TOS. Now, Jeffries could have made this thing. After all, it certainly fits his designs. Other than the I'm not sure what those could be called. Bulges in the engineering section, which widen the otherwise very Constitution-esque engineering section. And the very, very long impulse deck, which I presume is more suited for the warp core. After all, the Constitution's Warp Core was effectively just a super-sized, super-version of the Warp 5 engine in the NX. Yeah. It is effectively a quad nacelle design, thanks to, well, those two separate Bussard collectors. To be fair, though, it might actually be one set of warp coils, but they didn't have a Bussard collector for <laughs> that was good enough for the job, so they just strapped on two because it worked. And this thing could easily, very easily, fit into the whole TOS family. Unfortunately, there is one problem. While Jeffries could have designed it, it would not have been able to appear in TOS back then. This is not due to any particular design problems. Okay, it kind of is. It's more a material problem. Every single model in TOS was made of balsa wood, pine, generally materials that do not hold much in the way of strength. Very little metal. And whatever metal there was, wasn't exactly structural. You'd require th steel bars going through the entire thing to support those warp nacelles, especially if they got all the electronics. Especially back then. I'm not saying this to insult the model makers of TOS. They did a hell of a job with a limited budget. But they would never have been able to build this. They had very little... They had access to very little fiberglass back then. In fact, I'm pretty sure there was zero fiberglass in the original models. Very little metal... It generally was not a fun time for anybody. That said, if they did have heavy structural steel for the entire frame, they could have made this model work. Just like every other model from STO. I hate to say it, but you'd require a lot of structural steel to make those models work. Especially if you need, want all the lighting, and it's generally not a fun time. Still, you're not here to just hear me ramble about how well this thing fits in with the design frame. Design frame. Ha! Time frame design. You want to hear stats. Easily done. Obviously, the ship is a dreadnought cruiser. Five engineering consoles. Four tactical, two science. With a five forward, three aft weapons layout, and a single hangar bay, which in this case has Class F shuttlecrafts. A fun fact, prior to the introduction of the legendary Miranda, this was the only way you could get your hands on a Class F shuttlecraft. As a fighter pad, obviously. It also comes with a dynamic power distributor console, which increases your damage resistance rating a little bit and increases your directed energy weapons. 
to a point. It's not going to be, well, the Prior's World satellite. Or the Vulnerability Exploiter and... You get the idea. That said, it also comes... That said, it's part of a set. Specifically, the Synergenic Retrofitting set. Which also allows additional damage from phasers, disruptors, and plasma. Unfortunately, the other two consoles, the Disruption Pulse Emitter and the Secondary Shield Projector, I believe the Disruption Pulse Emitter comes from the D9 Battle... from the D9 Dreadnought Cruiser, and the Shield Projector from the Romulan ship. The... I'm not entirely sure what the name is. I kinda wish that was in the Mud Store, so I could do a review on all of those. But according to blogs, apparently the next one up is gonna be the freak... the goddamn... Sarcophagus and the Crossfield. At least out of those, at least out of that set, there's at least one ship that's worth it. I can't wait to do a review of the Dicana Warbird, and if anybody wants to go, hey, I can help you get that boat if you want, please let me know. That way I can do a review of this thing. And utterly tear the goddamn... And utterly tear apart the STD boats. As for this thing... SF, SIF shunt is the starship trait. Basically it goes, the higher your health is, the more power you get. So you could just keep healing yourself and making yourself more powerful. I can foresee ways this could get very broken very fast. No wonder this ship is so popular. Just because of that trait. Now, I do not have that set. Mostly because I don't have the D9 or the Romulan ship. Again, the name escapes me. But... I do plan on getting them eventually. Hopefully the Mud Store actually gives me that ability. Of course, it will probably be a cold day in hell before that happens. Regardless, is this ship worth a ship worth getting? Now, I have found this thing to be actually quite maneuverable, in spite of the fact that it's a dreadnought cruiser. However, I am going to say I'm a little bit biased. Due to personal experience. Remember, I am using a lot of fleet equipment, specifically RCS an RCS console with resistance all and Neutronium Alloy to enhance turn rate. So I might be a little biased in saying this thing is actually quite agile for a Dreadnought Cruiser. I do not know. Mostly because I'm unwilling to try this thing without them. <laughs> because whenever I take this thing into combat, it's always, all things must die. And relatively efficiently. This thing is a tough boat. And I've taken it into combat. It is a very tough little boat. Is it worth getting? That's debatable. After all, there are plenty of other ships in the line. So, yeah, it's entirely up to you to get it, but as someone who's actually enjoying this thing, I do recommend it. Mostly because you know, I am a huge TOS fanboy. I mean, I can see where they could make some improvements. But I grew up with it. Housecoat Gaming, signing off.